Why so serious? I hope this gets rebooted. Hey folks, Kuro the Artist here. It's only a matter of time before a show usually makes a reference to poke fun at itself, the fans, or its own status in pop culture. Do we really need a new guy this far into the season? With five shows across the past couple decades, of course Ben 10 would have its hand at these kinds of exchanges as well. Some of these may be a bit of a stretch to say they're directly fourth wall breaks, but they at least reference the meta commentary of the show in some fashion, so I found them interesting enough to throw them on the list. This is the worst show I've ever seen. Scene. The first comes from the classic series fourth season, where Max watches Ben and Gwen fight over Cooper's spare movie ticket. He turns directly to the camera and says, This should be interesting. That's the only one I could find for the classic series, so let's move on to Alien Force, where we start getting a few more. Another one is Ben's reference to the fans' reaction of the sequel series compared to the original. It's like five years later and the bad guy Kenko has teamed up with the hero Ishiyama. It's a sequel to the original show, but they kind of messed it up. It's pretty clear this is them poking fun at how fans reacted to Alien Force. Force, with them even name-dropping the original production title of the series. It's Sumo Slammer's Hero Generation. It's not Sumo Slammer's classic. Now, like I said earlier, some of these are a stretch, but I feel like this line... I like the old one better. Is the show already lampshading their predictions for how fans are about to react to the Ultimatrix, based on how they've reacted to changes before? In Ultimate Alien, we get a ton of meta-commentary, but while we're in the midst of stretching things, we're met with this infamous episode of Duped, where Ben splits his personality into three versions of himself. The more arrogant version of himself sneers at Gwen. I'm Ben Classic. Miss me? Which is also speculated to poke fun at how brash Ben was written in the classic series. I'm here. Why don't you put a sock in it? Sorry, I don't speak dweeb. But back on track to something more clear-cut, there's this fan who uses a Mr. Smoothie flavor as an allegory for how much the Alien X hype disappointed fans. After all the hype, the Alien X smoothie was a real disappointment. Although, with how much Alien X was promoted before his pretty mundane debut, I feel like this criticism is justified. Another pretty direct one is when Ben insults Captain Nemesis for shouting his name. Why are you shouting your name out? It's stupid! Another complaint that a side of the community dislikes about the UAF era. Arms. Although personally, I am a fan of it when it's appropriate. Stepping back to more subtle ones, we get two in the middle of the episode video games. The first in which Ben accepts Will Harang's challenge on live TV, leading to this exchange. Any last words? None that I'm allowed to say on television. To their credit, they are on TV in-universe as well, but this also doubles for the fact that Ben is a television show airing on Cartoon Network. And given how Ultimate Alien can be argued when Ben 10 was at its peak of cultural popularity, at least in the United States, Will Harang exclaims, it's it's obvious. Everybody loves to watch Ben 10. But there's one fourth wall break that's again crystal clear. During the Generator Rex crossover, similar to Grandpa Max in our first example, Dr. Holiday turns directly towards the camera to address the viewers after a brief encounter with Cesar. For the record, most scientists are not like that. But back to Ultimate Alien proper, given that the show's crew is pretty in tune with how fans respond to the show, Kevin comments on Ben's choice to use Fast Track over another fan favorite blue speedster. He loses way faster than accelerate. Like the Ultimatrix comment, this just feels like them lampshading some inevitable reactions to the furry frenzy's introduction. Now let's leap on over to Omniverse, where Ben meets his cousin, Clyde Fife, where they are shown in front of the series' own theme song, the boldest fourth wall break so far. Awesome powers! What are you doing? It's my superhero theme song! But the most well-known one of all goes to Chad Smith's discussion on Celestial Sapiens, which brings up the fact that the franchise's own art style and pools of voice actors are constantly fluctuating. Even first thinker asthma's voice and appearance has changed on at least three occasions. Perhaps a walking, or should I say flying, stand-in for fourth wall breaks and meta-commentary comes from the character Collectimus. I'm the biggest bent head fan that ever existed. Yeah, don't get ahead of yourself there, buddy. At least according to subscribers, that's Stan Hanrahan. Fuck! They even pulled an Alien Force and made the same joke about Ultimate Alien switching to Omniverse. I like the outside better! And to double down on the changes between shows, Collectimus makes another relatively popular opinion fans had at the time. I just wish this world was just a little darker. 
grittier, as Omniverse's tone is noticeably lighter and more comedic than its predecessors. Aside from lines of dialogue, there's also times where out-of-universe stuff makes it into the show, like using the show's actual logo for certain in-universe events and publicities, or using things that originated strictly as merchandise and putting it back in the show. Although, these don't really count, but I wanted to mention them anyways. And while I still haven't seen all of the reboot, I found a few notable examples too. A Season 3 episode, Zingo Nation, featuring a cartoon character that was shifting to other television shows, went viral in the fandom a bit for this scene right here. There's no saving me, Quinn. I'm just a bad dude. No dude is too bad to save. An obvious reference to the UAF era's focus on character drama, specifically the Ultimate Kevin arc, a story in which fans yet again have a love-hate relationship with. To stretch things a little further, the Kevin parody's color scheme, Kyle, looks oddly similar to Cooper's, where in Ultimate Alien, Kevin and Cooper have extremely similar looks, which, you guessed it, is pretty divisive among fans. But earlier in this very episode, Kevin does a spew of what I speculate could be references. For starters, when garbage like Lucky Girl gets 18 seasons, as at the time, the original continuity was commonly accepted to be about 18 seasons long. Although, now that's debatable, but that's a topic for another video. He then mentions, a Japan-only radio drama, a potential reference to the Lucky Girl anime spin-off that never seemed to get off the ground. And he caps off his rant with, and a supplemental comic tie-in about the Omega Lucky Scouts that showed up after the fourth season finale when, um... He... he couldn't mean... right? Jumping ahead to the movie, Milius makes this joke, One way or another we'll find him. If not now, then perhaps in the next reboot. Referencing how the series itself is a reboot, and he even winks at the camera to show self-awareness about how they'll probably get rebooted again eventually. And with the series finale, Alien Extinction, this special is filled with nods and jokes about the past four series. But I'll just cover a handful of my favorites, like Alien X, X like mystery, or X like the Roman numeral for 10? which was not a super popular but still notable discussion among fans about why Ben named this transformation Alien X, although one could argue that this question was already answered in Ultimate Alien. Transformation 10, now available. With Alien Force's roster conceptualized as power stacking to make Ben's abilities more diverse while he had less available transformations, fans couldn't help but make comparisons between aliens, like Ben does right here. Whoa! Another diamond head! But they've been joking about this all the way back in the Alien Force promos. Swamp fire. He's like half wild vine and half heat blast. He's pretty cool. He also soon name drops one of the sequel series. Shouldn't you be called like Alien Force or something? Which is ironic as the trio never officially calls themselves Alien Force. But it's arguable that this could be taken as their official name. Ben also compliments Omniverse Ben's colorful creature with Blocks! How cool is that? Ooh, I want that alien in my rotation! A nice way of giving Block some love after all the criticism he's received over the years. Granted, this could just be a standard, in-character reaction, but with Blox's reputation, I feel like there's some layers to this dialogue. But hey, did you know that 5YL Episode 7 is coming out next week? It's gonna be a banger, and it's 21 minutes long, the longest episode yet, and has a lot of my personal favorite scenes. I'm very excited to put it out there. And come March 2nd, and beyond second season debuts with an episode all about Ben's notable speedsters. Both of these projects can be supported on our Patreon, with loads of behind-the-scenes previews and vlogs as well. But did we miss any examples? Probably. Ben 10 has had a lot of episodes, so let us know if there's anything else I could have mentioned here in the comments down below. Until then, I hope you have a great weekend. And as always, keep it fizzy. I've got a feather on my own. Every type of bad weather I feel it come, feel it come In every kind of bright ray You shine in the day It never ever fly away